My name is Martin Tyner, and this is Bell. This is our Hero Talk. And uh, we've been asked a, a lot of questions about, about the wildlife ambassadors that we use for our educational programs. And so we're just kind of here today to visit a little bit and, and answer some of your questions. Hatch date was March 22nd. March 22nd, uh, 2018. License date to which he uh, basically came to us was uh, August 8th, 2018. name is, is she is a, a Harris Hawk and the Harris Hawk is um, is a North American bird we we find them here in the United States uh, southern Arizona New Mexico and Texas uh, though this little gal uh, came out of a captive breeding program out of Louisiana and that's where she gets the name Bell from because she's my little southern bell The scientific name is Parabudio, and what the Parabudio is is uh, Budio is a broad-winged hawk, and this in para is is kind of kind of like saying uh, it's a broad-winged hawk, but not really. And so your your Budios are red-tailed hawks, uh, Swainson's hawks, Ferruginous hawks, uh, rough-legged hawks. Um, there's a lot of Budios, which is the broad-winged hawk, and and because the Harris hawk has a, a broad rounded wing but it's it has a very very long tail like an occipiter hawk and, and she has longer legs more like an occipiter hawk but she is much more beefy and much more powerful than most uh occipiter hawks so she's classified as a parabudium yeah, a group of one yeah, the the, para, the Harris hawk is the only parabudio uh, because she's they're so unique in in their design. Uh, this little gal um, is um, about 42, 43 ounces in weight. Is her, is so she's a, a a very very large Harris hawk. Thank you for keeping it on the plastic. I appreciate that. Wingspan, about three feet. And so they, they don't have a long wingspan. It's, it's a relatively shorter, rounder, broad. Um, they're, they're, they're not a high-speed soaring bird. They're, um, they're basically more agile. They're, they're a sprint kind of a bird. And can we see her wings out? Show your free wings. Diet. Uh, in the wild, they eat a wide variety of, of, of rodents, small reptiles, and, and birds. Uh, it, here in captivity, she gets... Kind of the same. She gets a lot of uh, rats and mice, and she gets quail, and she gets pigeon, and she gets rabbits. And, and so we try to duplicate their diet as, as much as we possibly can in captivity to, to help keep them healthy. Activities. Well, the nice thing is she is one of, one of my falconry birds, not just a wildlife ambassador, so the Hunting season from September through February. Uh, we go out on the desert, and this equipment right here comes off, and she flies free. Uh, and and she and I go wandering out through the through the brush out of the desert, uh, flushing rabbits for her to catch. And so she spends a, a great deal of time chasing rabbits. Uh, she uh, then in the off season, which is where we're at right now, uh, she basically. Uh, spends her time hanging out with me. Uh, she likes to uh, come in the house. In fact, 
Uh, she sleeps in the house. Uh, in the wintertime, it's too cold for the Harris Hawk because they're a southern bird. And so she has a perch in an unfinished room down in my basement that she she uh, comes and hangs out in the perch. And then in the evening times, uh, she does like to, to just kind of hang out, with, throw a towel down and hang out in the living room. And we watch television together. And so she just is kind of a kind of a member of the family. And and then we travel throughout the Western United States doing school programs and scout programs and community event programs. And so she's a great wildlife ambassador. She's a, a wonderful, wonderful educator. And, and uh, you know, other than that, she's just kind of fat and sassy right now, aren't you? Yes, you are. Temperament, the, the Harris Hawk in general is uh, one of the finest, sorry about knock over my water, some of the finest temperament birds in the world. Uh, they are the only, one of the only birds in the world that hunts in packs like wolves. So they're, they, they hunt in groups and so they, they're, they're really good about cooperating and working, working together as a team. And, and that makes them uniquely qualified in falconry because they work, you know, when, when raised and handled properly, they work with, with humans. You know, she's a hunter, I'm her dog. And, and so we develop a partnership that's, that's really quite rare in the animal world so that communal uh, cooperative uh, uh, personality that, that they have, um, they are very stable dispositions. This is not a, a high, strong, or nervous animal like some some of the other, you know, hawks and falcons can be. And and so just the just an absolute joy. Um, also, their intelligence uh, extremely bright. Uh, they do remember everything. Um, and, and so you know you they they learn how to capitalize and they learn how to use people. Uh, it, in in assisting them in their ability to hunt and and catch food for themselves. So uh, really super smart, um, certainly smarter than than most birds of prey. Not in all, but certainly smarter than most. Uh, personality, like like I said, just uh, just gentle sweet uh, wonderful to work with um you, you know uh adaptable just just a great animal you know Be bell is is really very very typical of, of the harris hawks that i've worked with um i i really have never had a harris hawk or worked with a harris hawk um that that wasn't just just a joy to to be able to handle it to work with and bell is exactly the same but you know, in, in saying that, if you if you if you don't raise them properly, um, they because of they are so incredibly intelligent, um, they can be a they can be a, a, a real nightmare. They can actually be quite dangerous. Uh, if you have one of these hawks and, and you raise them inappropriately and you imprint them to humans, uh, and they have no respect for humans, they can be dangerous. And if you do something to offend them, they will hurt you. And, and so, but when they're handled appropriately, um, the, then they are just a, an absolutely wonderful animal to work with. I, I've had Harris hawks that were quite dangerous. I had a, 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 another female very much like Bell here that had been stolen from its nest by some teenage boys and imprinted and raised badly and abused and all that kind of thing. And, and she was quite dangerous. I had to be very careful um, because she she would uh, she'd attack people in the field. And, and in fact, she was so emotionally disturbed. Her favorite thing to hunt was cows. You know, if there was a cow within a mile, she had to go beat up a cow. Uh, and so they can be uh, they can be dangerous and hard to work with if you don't have the skills and, and expertise to handle them and raise them properly. But when they're raised properly. Like I said, there 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 isn't a, a a more gentle and interesting uh, animal on the planet than a, than a a well well handled Harris hawk for for falconry and for education.
Bell, Bell is, um, like I said, a dear member of the family. And she came to us, like I said, she came from, out of a captive breeding program out of Louisiana. And, and so we uh, uh, contacted the breeder and the breeder shipped her to us. And, and my sweet wife, Susan, and I, the closest airport that we could fly them into was uh, Salt Lake International, which is about a five hour drive from us here. And so we drove up to Salt Lake City to the airport and they got her off the plane and got her into cargo area and we picked her up and and it was all blocked off so we really couldn't even see her and so we got this we, as soon as we got her home uh we i had all the equipment ready to put on her the the leather anklets the the bells the the leather straps called jesse's and the swivel and everything was was ready to go and we got her out of her box we got her outfitted so that with all of her equipment and and then um and then we spent a great deal of time uh, sitting up here in the living room with her on my glove and just starting to get her used to her environment. And at first she was nervous um, because it was a new place, but um, it didn't take her very long, just a few days. And she settled in and, and started to accept me and, and the surroundings and started to, to enjoy her life. And, and uh, we have lots of, uh, videos uh on our youtube channel of of her first day uh with us and the the processes we go through uh in in the in training her and and videos of her out flying free and honey rabbits and so on our youtube channel is a great place to go and learn uh a lot about about bell and a lot about harris hawks and a lot about falcon Treats, you know, again, food food is more of a necessity than a treat for her. Um, I, I think her favorite food is jackrabbit, but it's, to be honest with you, it doesn't really matter if it's jackrabbit or mice or quail or pigeon or, or, or cottontail or, you know, ba basically she, uh, she enjoys eating. Uh, and so she, uh, uh, she likes all of the, the normal food. And let, and let me qualify this for everybody else that you do need to understand. If you if you think you're going to be a falconer, you do have to understand that you can't go to the local grocery store and get dead rats in the frozen food section. And so you have to set up uh, the ability to provide food, whether you order in frozen quail, rats, and mice uh, from companies like we use a company called Rodent Pro that we order in um, thousands and thousands of dollars of uh, frozen food every year for the animals or, or whether you breed your own you know rats and mice and, and raise your own quail or raise your own pigeons but you do have to develop a food source when you're working with these animals you cannot uh you cannot feed them meat meat is not good for them you have to feed them whole animals as far as activities her very favorite thing in the world to do is to go hunting and and so that's her her biggest motivation. I mean, she does really well. When we travel and do our shows. Um, you know, she she does very well when visiting people uh, uh, privately here at my home and, and hang around and going for walks and those kinds of things. You know, but uh, she knows that um, you know her personality starts to change. She knows that when we start to bring her weight down a little bit, so she becomes a little bit hungry, um, then her keenness picks up and her personality gets sharper and she's starting to 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 act like an apex predator and um, and when we go out in the field you know she she knows that we're going she you know uh it's it's different and she knows that it's different you know when i put her in in the hawk box the transport box um she knows if we're going to go do a show uh, versus whether we're going to go hunting how she knows, I'm not sure whether she just reads my body language or what it is, but she knows and she wants to get into that box and she wants to get out to the field and she wants to go out and, and hunt and chase rabbits. Uh, that's that's her, that's the funnest thing that she likes to do. Life expectancy uh, in the wild is about seven to 10 years for a Harris hawk like this. 
In captivity, we can double that. Um, you know, 15 to 20 years would be considered normal. Uh, my last Harris Hawk uh, was named Thumper. It was a male. Uh, and, and he lived uh, 29 years before he passed away. And, you know, the, about the last 10 years, he sure, certainly had slowed down a bunch. Uh, he, he really didn't hunt very much, but he liked to go out to the field and, and fly free. And he'd go chase lizards. Uh, but he, he did like his personal time. And so Belle right here, she should be around for close to 30 years as, as a friend and, and as a companion, as a wildlife ambassador.